Hi. Hello. Am I late? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody waited until the last minute to ask me for something. You um, know, the usual. You mean the diaper change? Yeah. The gigantic <laughs> diaper that needed to be changed. It took forever. Well, I'll leave out the details, but it was messy. Oh, really? Oh. Yes. Yes. But Yes. We don't need to start off on, on that note. I'm sure, I mean, <laughs> maybe people want to hear that. I don't think so. No. If, if you want to hear that, you're listening to the wrong, the wrong people. Yeah. No. All right. You ready? You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Your mom said, lucky you. <laughs> Should have saved it for you, Judy. <laughs> no, that would have caused some problems. All right. So I wanted to talk about you had a you had a post um a couple days ago that you put up on Instagram about putting your oxygen mask on before you help others. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about that. I think that a lot of people don't understand that idea. And I'm, when I say that, I'm a big believer in the fact that when someone doesn't understand what you're saying, it's not their fault. It's yeah. because you haven't done a good job explaining it. Yeah. So when I say I think a lot of people don't understand what that means, I think that's because no one, well, I don't want to say no one's done a good job explaining it, but they haven't, they haven't heard someone do a good job explaining it. Yeah. So big task in front of us. Let's see if we can explain this idea of why it's important to take care of yourself first. So that metaphor of putting your oxygen mask on first applied to life. Why, you know, I hear you say all the time, you need to take care of yourself before you take care of your kids. Obviously yeah. if they need to eat, they need to eat. But <laughs> this, this general idea. Um, so, I mean, why don't you, why don't you, Tell us a little bit about your thoughts on on putting your oxygen mask on first. Um, well, I think I'm going to start with what that means for moms and and for taking care of your kids. I think biologically, we're programmed. Women are programmed to take care of their kids, and I think that a lot of women um, lose sight of themselves when they become moms their identity, who they are, and all they really know themselves as is taking care of their kids. Um, and so they might think that if they go and take care of themselves first, that they are labeled as selfish or um, a bad mom, or um, I, you know, I chose to be a mom, why would I, why would I go and do these things for myself? I know, for myself, when I was a mom for the first few years, I wasn't taking care of myself. And the things that were going through my head was, well, lack of self-love, because I didn't love myself enough to think that I needed to take care of myself, if that makes any sense. Um, and also, I never had the, I'm selfish if I take care of myself. I more had the, what are other moms going to think of me if... Mm. If I take care of myself, are they going to think social I'm, pressure? Yeah. Are they going to think I'm selfish in the bad mom? Um, so that was what was going on for me. And also I was waiting because there was a lack of self love. I was waiting and angry at you for not making me take care of myself. I remember when I was complaining to a coach or something, I don't know who it was about, you know, not taking care of myself and, all this stuff and you know how I didn't get any help like no one you know told me to go take care of myself and they were like you realize that that's like your responsibility it's your responsibility to take care of you it's not anybody else's yeah. to tell you to go do that and I was really pissed off when that person said that to me and, and then now that I think about it they were a hundred percent correct it's nobody else's responsibility to tell you to go take care of yourself or to take care of yourself. That is something that you have to do on your own and, and want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. But can I interrupt? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I will anyways. 
<laughs> but I think that it, it's important to, to add, because I totally agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's your responsibility to take care of yourself. And nobody should have to tell you that. And yet, sometimes somebody, sometimes people need other people to tell them that because we are so programmed by everything in our entire lives. You know, our parents who, um, good, good intentioned will say, will, will focus too much. And I'm not, I'm guilty of this too, but with good intentions, I'll be too focused on you. Didn't, you need to do what I say, <laughs> whether or not it makes sense to you or whether yeah. or not it's, I realize it's right. You know, like I've already told them to go do this and I know that they don't really need to. And now I can't take it back. Well, you can, but the point is like, we've been conditioned to do what we're told by our parents. We go to school and we need to ask permission to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Like literally like I have to pee, but I have to ask permission first. There's some logic there, but there's not a lot. And the point that's made to kids is, you need permission to do everything, yeah. including pee yourself, right? So yeah. we're conditioned to need other people or, or feel like we need other people's permission yeah. our entire lives. And then, yeah, like you needed that tough love from that coach, whoever said that to you, you needed it said that way. Yeah. Sometimes people do need to hear um, it's okay to take care of yourself. It's okay to love yourself. It's okay to do things for yourself. You don't need someone else's permission to do that. Sometimes you do, people do need to hear that because of the, the way that we were raised or they were raised or whatever it might be. And sometimes people just need a reminder like you did some, uh, whether it needs to be tough love or not. Yeah. So I just wanted to add that because if you're like, well, if you're hearing us say it's your responsibility and you don't need somebody else's permission, I mean, that might fly in the face of the way you were raised by your parents, your schooling, your friend, like everything work, like you need permission to start a new project if you're working for someone else, whatever it may be. So yeah. I just wanted to add that. I, don't, I hope I didn't knock you off topic too much. Um, no. And, and I, I want to go back to what I was saying about the self-love thing. I think that is the biggest part for a lot of women. I know for myself, there was years ago, when I was in therapy, I had a therapist ask me a long time ago what I loved about myself. And I was like, and I came back, I was like, oh, this is so cool. I can do this. And I came back and I named all these things, but none of them were what I loved about myself. It was what I loved about how I was a good mom. And it, mm. it wasn't about why I loved Ashley. Um, so I think a lot of moms identify just as a mom. They forget for sure who they were before they were mom they forget who they're going to be after their kids leave and so when you identify as just a mom and you really lost sight of who you really are and don't really love who you really are because you don't know who that is then it's really hard to take care of that person because you don't know what to do with yourself um because I hear a lot of moms also say, well, you know, I'm just not good at taking care of myself. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that you don't think you have to? Or um, I'm always curious to what that means. Um, and I well, know for it's it's an excuse. Yeah. I bet they and don't even know what that means. And that's okay. Yeah. And I um, know go ahead. You keep interrupting me. I know for myself. Um, it, it's when I started like committing to taking care of me, it was, it was easy for me on days that weren't good days where I was in a funk to be like, mm, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to stay home. Like, I don't really need to do this. And those were the days that I needed it the most. And even if I didn't want to go anywhere or be around anybody, just getting in my car and physically leaving the chaos and just being with myself that was life-changing for me. That was, at least I was still doing something. To, yeah, to get setting the boundaries. Yeah, and separate myself. Yeah. So you're talking about self-care a little bit, and I do want to talk about self-care. I have a question for you about self-care. I, I also, before we, we talk, touch on that, I really want to, want to really quickly, um, Hannah put a good comment in the, in the chat 
um, we, she said something like we need the responsibility and the guidance or not in responsibility. We need the wisdom and the guidance, but it's, it's your responsibility, um, to take action with, with that information. Um, and I think that's a really good add on to what we were just talking about. So, you know, we can give you permission if you need permission to take care of yourself, but you have to go out and do it. Right. Yeah. And that's a good segue into the question I had for you and you were touching on it a little bit, which is self care. Like what, this is kind of what the entire conversation is revolving around children running around past me. The entire conversation is running, uh, revolving around self care and, and you need to take care of yourself what to you, so I'm interested in your take, whether it's what you do for self-care personally or what you think self-care should be, what does self-care mean to you? If somebody is hearing that phrase for the first time or has heard it many times but never really thought about it, we're saying take care of yourself. What does that look like? You said something about making sure you take, we call it me time, mm -hmm. make sure you take time out, away, alone, even if you're just driving around, right? Mm -hmm. What does self-care look like for you? What should it look like? Well, I'm running around behind me, please. I think it's different for everybody. And it's different for everybody. For myself, I think I think self-care for me, in order to keep my sanity and keep who you know in touch with who I am before I'm a mom, before I'm a wife, is you know taking action daily, um, setting boundaries the kids um, according to age because obviously the younger kids aren't going to, they're not going to notice as much um, or understand boundaries as much, but they understand earlier than we think. So no, they don't understand boundaries. That's why they're running around behind me when I ask them to stop. They do. They understand earlier than, than we think. Um, and for that, that means like if you, need while a child is napping or you know the and you have multiple children but the other children like telling them to read quietly because mommy needs to go take 10 or 15 minutes to herself um in that time i usually do stuff that i know um will if i'm in a frantic mood i do stuff that i know that will calm me down and calm my nervous system down and make me feel full again. And for me, that's, that's tapping. Um, and I think setting Which, boundaries. If people don't know what tapping is, they should definitely look it up. Yeah. Um, and there's a great app that you have. I don't remember what it's called. The tapping, the tapping solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. It's worth, it's worth people looking up. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's been like, I love tapping. I absolutely love tapping. I think we, we could go off topic on that, but keep going. Um, but setting boundaries with the kids. So for instance, we all know that when a mom goes to the bathroom, the kids follow and they come in and they talk to you and they bang on the door. And I allowed this for so long. And even though I've set boundaries around this, it still happened. But I say, when their child is behind the door asking me questions, I say, mommy's in the bathroom right now. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, so please leave me alone. And that's not me being a bad mom. That's saying like, if you're not bleeding or hurt and I'm in the bathroom, there's no reason for you to be coming to the bathroom when I'm in there. Um, and it doesn't matter whether I'm actually going to the bathroom or I'm just in there to get two minutes or five minutes to myself. It's, it's me setting a boundary so that I don't lose my shit on somebody and need to be by myself. And I... I think, I think that's okay. And I think it's, it's a hard thing to do because you have to be consistent with your boundaries. You can't set boundaries and then not be consistent with it because then the child isn't going to understand. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, consistency is huge. And I, so I have a psychology background. I went to school for psychology and I can tell you that the, if you want to change the habit, break the habit, whatever you want to call it, of them coming into the bathroom to interrupt you, whatever we want to say, mm -hmm. the only way to do it effectively is consistently. And you're like, well, yeah, that makes sense. But the, it's scientifically proven that intermittent conditioning, meaning 
um, sometimes kicking them out and sometimes not is the best way to solidify the habit yeah. to keep them coming back. Yeah. So it's not even consistency is the best way to do it. It's not consistent is going to make it worse yeah. because they're not going to know what to expect. And so, you know, we don't need to go into the science of that, but the, the bottom line is if you don't do it every time nicely, obviously exploding at them is not helping. It's just going to make it a, a, a harder habit. Yeah. You have to have the conversation ahead of time with all of them, no matter how many you have saying, okay, this is what happens when I'm like, whatever your boundary you're setting. So when I'm in the bathroom, if you're not hurt or someone else isn't hurt, then you need to leave me alone. Um, yep. And reminding them that because they, they will forget their kids and they'll try to push it. They'll try to push it and push it and push it. And you just have to constantly remind them. And I think that is one of the hardest <clears throat> about self-care, self-love, um, putting your oxygen mask on first is it's all consistency. Like going out of the house and taking me time, in order for it to happen, I believe that it has to happen consistently. Because if it doesn't, then you're not gonna you're not gonna find well, you're not gonna make time for it and you have to find time for it. So for myself, I know that when I wasn't marking it down or making it happen, it wasn't happening. So I literally have it on the calendar still, even though I'm really good about doing it. I have it in the calendar every Friday at like around 9.30, I go away for me time for two hours. Um, yeah. And it's very rare that it doesn't happen. And if it doesn't happen, it's because, you know, something came up, but I'll usually, usually make it on another day and still make it happen. If it doesn't happen, it's because there was something else that we decided with fully with your permission yeah. to do usually as a family, like a trip. Yeah. And like you said, it gets moved to a different, your me time gets moved to a different day. Mm -hmm. um, I think, it, yeah, so it's, it's non-negotiable. And I think you said in the beginning, the times that you need me time most are the times that you probably wouldn't have taken it. Yeah. And, and we've seen that. So it's non-negotiable. You're getting out of the house last week. I think it was last week we had the two year old and the four year old screaming bloody murder because they didn't want you to leave. And that was like the gut wrenching for you. I know. Mm -hmm. And I had to look at you and just say, just leave. Like yeah. I can handle it. Um, you, it's, it's non-negotiable. Yeah. Um, so I want to, th there's like a grab bag of things that you can do for self care. You touched on tapping, um, setting boundaries, taking time for yourself. Obviously, there's meditation, which we don't need to go down a, a rabbit hole with. Um, one of the things years ago that we both did together uh, was to come up with, uh, we called it a simple pleasures list, mm -hmm. like silly little things that make us happy. Mm -hmm. For me, um, in the winter, at least, it's uh, a warm cup of coffee, still hot, right? <laughs> not, yeah. not sitting and cooled off for three <laughs> hours. Um, not microwaved, but yeah. fresh, um, you know, walking in the woods, these little things that, that seem insignificant, um, but are really important and, and you can find time to do something. So it's like, well, I have two kids under two, let's just say, yeah. where the heck am I going to find time to take me time for three hours on a Friday? Well, that's a valid question. You know, your partner works, you're home with two young, young kids. They're never going to nap at the same, you know, I hear you. Yeah. You can still make sure that you get yourself a hot cup of coffee, hot cup of coffee and take a couple of sips before it cools down. Even if you're doing the dishes, come back and drink, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever it is, if you have a small, simple pleasures list, you can, you can be grabbing off that list. Um, what, you know, just briefly running down other things that you have done or, or might do. What else can you think of for, for self-care? Take a hot tub. Um, yeah. color. I, I used to come upstairs and color. I love coloring and coloring books, um, kids coloring books or adult coloring books. I think it's like whatever it is. So is adult coloring books like dirty pictures or like, <laughs> no, that's not what that is. Um, I think anything that brings you joy, anything, even if it's like something that makes you feel like a kid again, I think having fun and doing something that is fun and something you did when you were a kid. I don't, I don't think it really matters what it yeah. is. 
this is more of like the daily stuff. Um, as far as if you can plan a me time out of the house, I mean, if your husband works during the week and you don't have somebody that can come watch the kids, you can certainly make that time on the weekend and, and come up with some kind of deal. Um, for me, going when I go out of the house, I, I love coffee shops, even when I'm not drinking coffee, because I go through phases where I don't drink coffee. I will just go get an herbal tea and sit at the coffee shop and put my head in and listen to music. I just love the atmosphere of coffee shops. Um, you love like, people watching too. You like I to like, sit there and be nosy. Yeah, I like to people watch. Yeah, I'm one of those people. Um, and I like driving around. I like listening to podcasts. Sometimes I like listening to music. Um, I think music is a huge one. If you can find music that is meaningful to you, mm -hmm. um, there's no you know, clear definition of what that has to be either. I mean, you, you are all over the place with what you listen to. But if you have songs from when you were a kid that make you happy, great. If you have songs where the new songs where the message is, is inspiring or, or just calming or, you know, it's classical music is going to calm you down. I used to listen to classical music when I was trying to work and focus. Mm -hmm. you know, music can be incredibly triggering in a good way, mm -hmm. um, triggering this kind of state where you're, you're taking time for yourself. Um, I wanted to add exercising. If you, um, we don't need to, t to touch on how important exercising is. I think everybody knows that and would agree with that. And um, if you're, you were talking about being busy with kids, having a husband or a spouse that works, not being able to find time in the week, um, I think it would be silly to think that you wouldn't be able to find a couple minutes in the, even if it's early morning, even if you have to wake up 10, 15 minutes early to take 10, 15 minutes to work out before your spouse goes to work. Um, there's ways to, to do that too. I would say exercise is huge for mm -hmm. what it does for your body and your mind for the rest of the day. But it's the, the act of either carving time out where there wasn't maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes of sleep, um, carving time out for yourself or taking, the uh, step of saying no to something else mm -hmm. to put something for yourself in there, even if it's for two minutes. I think mm -hmm. that psychologically the key to that, like making that decision to put yourself first, even if it's for two minutes. Yeah. I think also, and this I know is hard for a, a lot of people. I think also when you think of putting your, gym mask on first if you could like five minutes um i think when you start your day and like you have kids you wake up to the kids like screaming or yelling or wanting you or needing you if you can in some way do something for yourself the first five minutes of the day and whatever that looks like but starting your day intentional and not being needed like doing something for you before you're needed by a million other people yeah. Um, and for me, another thing about self-care for me is, um, getting ready and it doesn't have to be like getting dressed up. It could be wearing your favorite sweatshirt and like just being intentional with getting ready and actually taking care of yourself. And I put a little bit of makeup on and it's not about being, um, having to look perfect or be perfect it's about it honestly makes me feel different it makes me yeah. show up differently when i i intentionally get dressed and ready for my day yeah. um dressed to impress yeah kind of yeah but you touched on something and i don't know exactly what you said but it made me think of putting your oxygen mask on first doesn't necessarily always have to mean for your kid before your kids it can mean with family and friends um learning how to set boundaries with them and say no. Um, saying no for a lot of people is hard and they, I know people just say yes and they don't even know what they're saying yes to and afterwards they regret it. They're like, why the heck did I say yes? I don't wanna do that. Um, so if you have to take um, a, a while to respond to something so that you can actually figure out if that's something that you wanna do, what was it if it's not a hell yes it's a hell no or something like that 
Um, well, yeah. So if it's if not an F, F word, yes, then it's a no. Yeah. If you're not, if your reaction, if your immediate reaction is not, hell yeah, I want to do that, then it should probably be no. Yeah. So it's, it's constantly observing your surroundings. Um, how is this situation making me feel? Um, is it dragging me down? Is this drama in my life, in my family, in this friendship, like affecting the way that I'm parenting, affecting the way that I am showing up in this world? And if it is, then setting boundaries around that. That's also putting your oxygen mask on first because you can't be pouring yourself out to friends and family and then having it like affect you poorly because that's not yeah it's not selfish of you to be like i can't do this anymore like this right. is a and i think i think that's an important point to make in this whole explanation of of why why it's important to put your oxygen mask on first we haven't actually touched on this idea of self it being selfish or perceived as selfish as as deeply as i think we need to touch on it um when you talk about taking care of yourself before anyone else, the usual response is, you know, but I have kids that need me kind of mm -hmm. thing. I can't. So, you know, we have this, you and I have this understanding. We've had this conversation many, many times. Our kids are incredibly, incredibly important. Mo a lot of my waking day is, is focused around them. The, I see them as the legacy that I'm going to leave behind on this planet. So I'm, they're incredibly important to me, but you and I have this understanding that in order to be there for our kids, we first need a strong relationship between the two of us. Yeah. And in order to have a strong relationship between the two of us, we need to take care of ourselves individually. Yes. And so if you look at that, that progression the other way to write, write that I'm visual. So I write things down. The other way I'm writing that down in my head is you come first. You're number one. Yeah. Number two is your relationship with your partner, your significant other, if there is one. Yeah. And then number three is the kids. And that's not being selfish. That's not saying the kids are not important. It's saying you have to take care of yourself first to have a good relationship. You need to have a good relationship first before you can show up for your kids. Because if your relationship sucks, you're not gonna show up for your kids the way that you should, if that's no. eating at you. And there are times where that's not your fault. Yeah. There are times where a relationship might fall apart because of the other party. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I'm not talking about that being your fault necessarily, but if your relationship sucks, you are not showing up the way that your kids deserve. Yeah. And if you're, if you're looking at your relationship to fix your relationship or to keep your relationship going well, if your self-love and self-care sucks, you're not showing up in the way in your relationship that your partner deserves. Yeah. And so you can tell me all day long that your kids should come first. Great. That kind of logic, you still need to take care of yourself. Yeah. If you want to look at it as your kids coming first, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Your relationship needs to be strong before your kids can come first, because if they're the most important thing in the world, your relationship needs to be strong and you need to take care of yourself. So any way you look at it, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. It's actually, if you want to say your kids are most important, it's actually doing it for them. If that's how you want to look at it. Yeah. Really good point. So good that you have nothing left to say. I love, I, I, that's how I, we should end all of our arguments. Like yeah, that was such a good point. You win and as long as I win. There's going to be the people or the, you, there's like a comparison track to fall into because they, there's these super moms who are all over the place. They're part of everything. If your kids are going to school, they're part of every school activity that they are driving their kids around everywhere to every sports activity. Um, they're nonstop living their life for their kids. They are, there are some moms. I don't need to do that. Like this is, this is what my job is. And it was, it's like, how's that working for you? And, and they yeah. might convince you that it's 
awesome, but I know that under, underneath are really hurting. Um, yeah. And usually end up being the moment that when their kids leave the nest, are completely lost and have like a midlife crisis. Um, yeah. So I know a lot of moms will look at those moms like, why is their house perfect? Their yard is perfect. They they look perfect. They're all over the place. They're a part of all these things that their kids do. And how are they doing that? Yeah. <laughs> and I want to say there's something that we're not seeing because it's not For all sure. what it looks like. Yeah. Um, it's It's all the external things. It's all the... Uh, material things, uh, mm -hmm. not just material things, but the things that you can see from the outside. Yeah. And it doesn't, um, your phone just you got... started ringing. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't, it's all the things that you can see from the outside that paint a good, it's like social media, you know, social media is a highlight reel. What they're putting out there looks good, yeah. but underneath the surface, I'm not saying that those people that, that you just described are terrible people. No, but I'm saying, you know, what, what, all right. So my perspective on, on parenting is I need to model, not tell them or teach them what they should be. I need to model what they should be. And what is that modeling for your kids other than what we kind of started off on, which is continuing this idea that um, the, so it, it's modeling that that parent just exists for the kids. Mm -hmm. And it's continuing this idea that when those kids grow up, it's adding to the conditioning from schools and parenting and friends and all this stuff that, that they need permission, that they can't take care of themselves, that they need to, to be here for other people first, right? It's just a vicious cycle. And so I agree with you. There's some great looking pictures of, of parenting um, and they're doing a lot of things right, yeah. but they're not teaching their kids to take care of themselves. Yeah. And how, uh, you know, we don't need to go down the, the current events psych, uh, spiral right now, but how much do we see and hear about people who are not taking care of themselves? Yeah. Not, not, we'll just leave it at that. How many, how many people are not taking care of themselves these days, um, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally? Well, where do we think we learned that yeah. from the models that were set for us? Yeah. And the, the one other thing I want to add, you, you kind of touched on this. You, when you start taking care of yourself, you're going to have to battle the demon of feeling selfish. We talked about that. You're also probably going to run into other people <laughs> acting as though you're selfish, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about this recently, this uh, crabs in a bucket phenomenon where the people who try to better themselves are attacked because they're bettering themselves by the, they're attacked by people that aren't trying to better themselves solely for the reason that those people subconsciously or consciously know that they should be doing what that person is doing and trying to better themselves, but they don't want to do the hard work and it's easier to sabotage that person because that person's making them feel like crap. Yeah. And they'll the often crabs. Yeah, they'll often, if you try to set boundaries to put your oxygen mask on first, they'll often play the victim. They'll often make you feel like you are selfish and doing something wrong. Um, and you're taking care of your, your mental health, your health, yourself, um, and doing what's best for you. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk back on that. Learn to say, learn to say no. Yeah. Learn to say no. Except well, and, and, and learn, like, if you know that people are going to act like, like if you, so you, you touched on friendships, relationships, right? Yeah. Setting boundaries. Um, if you're going to set a boundary with, within a friendship at work, whatever, just expect that when you say no to something or when you set a boundary, Someone's not going to like that. There's a very high possibility that the, uh, the crabs in the bucket are going to try and pull you back down when you're trying to better yourself. And we talked like we last time we had this conversation, I said, that's a compliment. Yeah. View that as a compliment. View that as you doing something right. When you're trying to better yourself and someone who is not 
or, or has convinced themselves that they are, but they're really not trying to better themselves takes a shot at you or -hmm. calls you selfish or makes you feel selfish. That's a compliment. It feels, it hurts because you want other people to accept and like and respect you, but it's a compliment. It's, you know, I I hate to relate everything to sports, but sports was incredibly important to me when I was growing up. When somebody else on the sports field talked trash to me and tried to get in my head, I I just kind of laughed at them. One, because I was like, you really think I'm stupid enough that you can get my head, but two, because it's a compliment. If I wasn't any good, they wouldn't have to get in my head. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing. If, if somebody is trying to make you feel bad for making yourself better, that means you're on the right path. And, and if you are going to say no, because something doesn't feel right, like if it's not a, it's a hell no, whatever, he said, F yes, F no, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, there's no explanation behind the no, that, you know, that's not right for me. You don't ever have to explain yourself. And you, when you, when you do like come up with a bunch of explanations why your answer is no, or you don't want to do something, it just makes it look like an, ex- um, there's no need to explain yourself. There's no need for an yeah. Um, so, yeah. I agree. There's no need to explain yourself. No. Okay. So. Did you have anything else you wanted to add in? I mean, I think I, I have a little list in front of me. I think I touched on everything that I wanted to touch on. I mean, I'm sure I could go on this about this topic forever. Um, yeah. But I think there, I- there's only one more thing I wanted to add, and I can say it quickly. You know, we touched on it in terms of modeling for your kids, but it's leadership. So yeah. if, if you have a position where you can, where you view yourself as a leader, I would say that you, you're a leading in any position that you're in. Even, you know, think about work. Like, it doesn't matter. I've been the brand new guy who is probably lowest on the totem pole and I've been the boss and everything in between you lead from every position. But yeah. if you are in a leadership role, um, this disingenuous leadership is asking someone to do something that you're not doing yourself. <laughs> and so if, if I'm expecting other people to do something, I need to be doing it too. And yeah. I'm expecting other people to take care of themselves. I expect you to take care of yourself. I expect our kids to take care of themselves. I expect people that I work with to take care of themselves. So a good leader is going to do that, which they expect other people to do. And so I need to take care of myself too. I yeah. view myself as leading my family and my kids. And, and that's where it comes into parenting. But I lead other people too. And I need to practice what I preach. Yeah, for sure. So that was the last thing I wanted to add. Okay. All right. Well, Great. thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. Um, and we'll see you next week, next Friday at eight thirty.